Let's take a look at math, grade 4, module 5, lesson 40, fraction equivalents, ordering, and operations. Topic G, repeated addition of fractions as multiplication. Now in this lesson, we're going to take some data that was collected about the height of some players on a team, and we're going to create a line plot with them. So what I've done is I've drawn my line plot and I used a ruler to do that to help make sure that my spacing was all even. Now one of the things I'd like to see you doing when you use a ruler to draw your line plot is don't just make the space between the 5 and the 6 1 inch. Make that space 2 inches. That way you can spread your line plot out a little bit. If you just make it to the 1 inch it gets a little hard to put your X's. And then also, between the 5 and the 6, I need to know what 1 half would be. Well, if I use 0, 1, and 2, then I know that 1 is in the half position, so I can put my mark above the 1. We did a lesson once before on line plots, but I think with this lesson, our numbers that we're using are a little larger but we're going to use the same process that we did before. I'm going to look at player A. I'm going to look at player A's height, 6 and 1 fourth. Well, I'm going to take an X, and I'm going to bring that X to the 6 and 1 fourth spot on my number line. So I know that this is 6. 1 fourth is going to be in this direction, but I need to figure out how many spaces I have between my 6 and my 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I have 8 spaces between my 6 and my 7. I knew that I would be dealing with 8ths because I looked over here and I saw these denominators were 8ths. Not all of them, but a lot of them. So I split the space between my numbers into 8 parts. So I'm trying to figure out where 6 and 1 fourth would be. Knowing that this is eighths, I know it takes 2 eighths to make 1 fourth. And if I don't know that, well, I can just think about half and then breaking the half into two parts would give me fourths. So I can move this x here. So player A is represented by this x. And just to help me keep track of things, I'm going to put a check mark in this box. It helps me attend to precision and make sure that I don't skip one or put one in more than one time. So now let's take a look at B. I have 5 and 7 eighths. So I'm going to grab my X. I'm going to come over here to my 5. And then I need to go 7 eighths. So I'm going to put that X right there. And that will represent player B. Now player C is six and a half, so I'm going to get an X. Six and the halfway mark is going to be four eighths. One, two, three, four. So I can put a check by six and a half. Now I have six and a fourth. Well I already did six and a fourth one time right here. So I know that I'm going to have two X's there. When I have two X's, I have to stack them on top of each other. So this would be one eighth, this would be two eighths. Two eighths is the same as one fourth. So that X would go there. And I'll put my check mark. Now I have player E, six and two eighths. Six is here, one eighth, two eighths. So I have another one that's the same size. I'm going to stack it on top. And I'll put my check mark. So then I have player F at 5 and 7 eighths. So here's my 5, 1 eighth, 5 and 2 eighths, 5 and 3 eighths, 5 and 4 eighths, 5 and 5 eighths, 5 and 6 eighths. 5 and 7 eighths would go there. 
So I'll check that one off. I have six and one eighth. So here's my six and here's my one eighth. And check that one. I have six and five eighths. So here's my six, one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, five eighths. Check that one off. Player I is five and six eighths. So here's my five, one eighth, two eighths. 3 eighths, 4 eighths, 5 eighths, 6 eighths, 5 and 6 eighths. And then I have player J, one more. So 6 and 1 eighth. So here's 6 and here's 1 eighth. And I'll check that one off. Now, once you complete the line plot, they're going to ask you different questions that you will use either the data or the line plot to help you solve. So let's go answer one of those questions. One of the players on the team is now four times as tall as he was at birth when he measured one and five eighths feet. Who is the player? So we have a player that when he was born he was one and five eighths feet. Now he's four times as tall. So I'm going to have to say four times, which I'm going to underline again, because that tells me how many times I need to multiply or how many copies of my mixed number I need to make. So here's one and five eighths. So I'm going to multiply that by four. I'm going to make four copies of it. So I can see that that's going to be 4 times 1 and 5 eighths. I'm going to take 1 and 5 eighths and I'm going to distribute it in my mind into 1 plus 5 eighths. Now I can separate it and I can say 4 times 1 plus 4 times 5 eighths. When I do that, 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 5 eighths, I can multiply my whole number and my numerator. 4 times 5 is 20, so 4 times 5 eighths is 20 eighths. Now, I can look at 20 eighths and see that I have a fraction that is greater than 1. So how many eighths can I take out to make a whole number? I can take 8 eighths out, that would give me one whole. I can take another 8 out, that would be 16 eighths, that would give me two holes. 20 minus 16 is 4, so it would leave me with 4 left over. So I would have two holes and 4 eighths. I can change 20 eighths into 2 and 4 eighths. When I add my 4 plus my 2 together, that equals 6 and 4 eighths. So, this player was 1 and 5 eighths feet when he was born. Now he's 4 times as tall, which means he's 6 and 4 eighths feet tall. So let's go look over here and see if we can find our player who is 6 and 4 eighths. 6 and 1 fourth, 5, 6 and a half, 6 and 1 fourth, 2 eighths, not 4 eighths. Looking down, I'm not seeing one that's 6 and 4 eighths. So I have to think about maybe there's another way to say 6 and 4 eighths. Well, what do I know about 4 eighths? Well, 4 is half of 8, so this is equal to 6 and 1 half. So which player is six and a half feet tall? Player C is six and a half feet tall. All right, that'll take care of things for lesson 40, where we've been solving multiplicative comparison word problems involving fractions.